Hello viewers, Super GT here. F1 23 is finally upon us. A brand new Formula 1 game where we will be witnessing more than our fair share of absolute carnage, some pretty poor pit entries, and then even a recreation of Verstappen versus Hamilton at Silverstone last year. So let's start back at the start, joining session, our very first session, up against a bunch of clones very interesting CIA experiment gone wrong and they found their way into my living room in F1 world. Anyway, race number one, we land in Qatar and I must be honest, this is a track that I can barely remember as it's not one that's featured on the calendar all that much and that was case in point here coming out of this corner as I just kind of do a nice little 180 spin. This put me down towards the back of the pack for this first race unfortunately in ranked as you can see it's collisions off which made no difference to me because I was spinning my way all the way to the back eventually finishing 12th now we move to China now this is a track I haven't really driven in a long time either and is actually not on the calendar in F1 23 in the real life the real world championship interestingly enough but here we are found myself up in a nice little battle here the third we almost do a Hamilton 2007 there into the pit entry eventually finishing this race in eighth and you know what that's not too bad but we're getting taunted by this dude on the podium look at that and uh, what wasn't incredible was my trophy cabinet looking a bit like Tottenham Hotspurs at this moment not too many trophies in there we needed to change that and I thought you know what that th that guy right there he looks like a winner to me and so we're changing our avatar we even made him into max verstappen and then actually you know what we've we've got this pose which is clearly the pose of winners and so with the verstappen gear on a new avatar and the binocular pose there was no chance we were going to lose now jumping back into ranked right and it's, it's a bit silly with the collisions off at least to begin with you do have to get to a higher rank to witness the full carnage of collisions on this was a pretty good race it was quite close um i did finish on the podium in p3 but mainly because there was only four players in the race and um some questionable fashion choices up on the podium i mean what is that suit on the left absolutely diabolical stuff but anyway right i decided to start my own lobby you see here collisions on this is what we want to witness really isn't it um, but unfortunately I have no friends apart from these mannequins in the background um, so there I was doing my little binocular pose with no one else joining my lobby I just kind of stood about like a bit of a loser but the the clones were back in my living room once again um, and fortunately enough we were able to join a race and that was this one here Silverstone let's jump into it a qualified third in the one shot qualifying and oh this this guy doing a bit of a jump start I think I think it's fair to say and uh, the stewards will be not taking upon that too kindly as we receive a big ram in the rear end from that red bull getting a bit aggressive before we even get to the first corner and so we've uh, we've been demoted here down to p8 try and settle into this race the best we can with the alpine making contact up in front and we're going to use the slipstream here and a bit of overtake button to pull out to the left hand side up the inside we go to take sixth place at least momentarily as the Alpine comes back around the outside so lots of frantic action here at Silverstone as we try to jostle for position on this opening lap coming up towards Cops Corner for the first time throwing the car in getting a good exit now um, this guy yet yeah, mike coxmore yes i just said that and i probably shouldn't have done uh, that is his name and um i'll try not to actually say it many more times in this video uh, unfortunately uh, it may mean this video is demonetized anyway up the inside of the alpine like he was stood still up behind this ghosted ferrari did the jump start and uh, is no longer in the race why don't the cars just disappear if they're not in the race? I don't get it. It's really weird. Then these guys decided to recreate Hamilton and Verstappen last year 
with uh, Verstappen ending up flying into the wall with a 500G impact. In fact, it was actually Charles Leclerc on this occasion. Charles Leclerc playing F1 open lobbies in his spare time, which is just absolutely incredible. Never thought I'd see the day. And here, look at this. I'm actually going to overtake him now. Up the inside we go. And he's got no chance of defending against such a majestic move there from Super GT in the in the Williams. Coming up towards Club Corner at the end of the lap here. Just trying to cement third place at the end of lap number two. This race is going rather well so far. But we do have a horde of cars immediately behind us with uh, DRS now enabled. It can be quite tricky to, to keep these cars at bay, especially with the Alpha Tauri sending in a mega lunge from about 58 postcodes behind. Now I'm on the back foot with someone on my left hand side. It's Charles Leclerc, he's come back through and there's a bit of lag. And I say a bit of lag, I mean, it's as if I'm on dial up again. Charles Leclerc actually disappears completely and reappears behind me with old man Jenkins in the house now coming through. And uh, I've been demoted now into P5. There is Charles Leclerc doing a nice little tactical teleportation behind me, which is uh, really interesting to see. I don't know if that was a feature or a bug, but it was uh, rather mesmerizing as, oh my goodness, old man Jenkins turning right on a straight. Up behind the Alpha Tower now, we're going to send in a lunge and it's not going to end too well. Really clumsy, really clumsy. I mean, what is going on here? Three abreast into the hairpin. And uh, it's getting really rather feisty now, as uh, we are on the final lap, lap five of five, battling for P5. Actually, no, we're battling for P3. And um, we're going to try and go around the outside, trying to get onto the podium to cement our legacy as the greatest driver of all time. Coming into Cops Corner, and you might notice that um, track limits were not obeyed. You might have seen that there with uh, Mike underscore Oxmall uh, quite close behind and this one could go really one of two ways or one of three ways I could finish fourth where I currently am I could finish fifth or I could finish sixth those are the real options here and uh, yeah as we come through the final corner it's, it's going to be a fourth but it is going to actually be very close indeed with uh, Charles Leclerc in fact less than half of a tenth over the line now the next race, well, let me tell you about this one. Qualifying didn't go too well. Went through the first corner and I continued turning right on the exit of a right-hander. Just clearly wanting a better view of that uh, billboard. Now you see here, as it, it was actually wet on the grid and uh, my engineers deliberating about how bad of a driver I was in qualifying. So we best do a good job here to prove to the team that I'm actually worthy of a Williams seat so let's let's take a look then as we hurtle in towards turn number one and I must be honest here guys um, it was actually quite a clean start I'm not witnessing anything like the amount of death and carnage that I probably would have expected as uh, we actually all make it through there there is a car out of the session there are cars going very wide indeed but we all seem to make it through and um, yeah, that could have definitely been a lot worse. So I'm actually quite impressed, I must say, at the quality of uh, driving here on F123. And I probably spoke too soon as we've got cars facing backwards and going straight on at the chicane. As the Haas cars come back through, Magic Alonso on my right hand side there. So Fernando Alonso logging on and uh, giving the game a go. It's always good to see the F1 drivers actually log on in a titanic battle now with him as we head as we head down the hill up the inside I'm in P14 take a look at this almighty gaggle of cars up in front we've got a car on the left hand side we've got someone going slow I've gone through them we've got weed Talica one ghosted out we've got that guy driving very wide and I still don't know why these ghosted cars are driving massive lunge hand goes up obviously that was the Ferrari's fault and I did not break too late at all this car turning left into the wall just as you do uh, this guy going wide and I've kind of followed him off and for some reason he had a bit of a brain lapse and okay, uh, I kind of thought he'd be ghosted stretch. but he wasn't and that put an end to my front wing 
But this was quite an interesting pit entry as we head into the final chicane. Uh, so I kind of had to pit. I had red damage on my front wing, as did this guy who goes straight on into the wall. And then there's this tyre randomly doing a little dance on the entry here. And um, physics have escaped the room, it must be said, at this point. And after all that, I still managed to speed into the pit lane like an absolute fool and get myself a three second time penalty. Uh, so I think it's fair to say that this opening lap here at Spa was really not to, not to schedule at all. Um, but there's this guy here with a 23 second penalty. That's, that's actually quite impressive. I would actually say well done. I'm actually quite impressed. Um, that's a pretty good job to get that much of a penalty in two laps. Uh, so we find ourselves here in, in eighth place. I almost destroyed my front wing again, getting very close to that wall. A little bit too close for comfort there. As we head in towards uh, the Lakeum chicane once again, get a nice little update from our engineer that the car in front is five seconds ahead. Although that's no longer the case because he is on the grass, on the apex, facing the wrong way. Magic Alonso there, having an absolute mare of a time. And that's me up into P6 of all places. And at the end of the race, it was going to be a rather satisfying P6, given that I started right at the back of the pack. However, I think F123 is really just a case of survival. As you can see here, only seven or eight, seven cars finished the race out of 20. Therefore, it's just a case of survival. Now, next up, Monza. This is going to be a very much uh, a race of survival. I replaced Carlos Sainz at Ferrari. And you can see here the, the Tifosi were going absolutely ballistic. The, the, the crowd, the, the stands there fall to the rafters as they want to witness Super GT in red, in the Ferrari suit, in the Ferrari team for the first time. Momentous occasion for the Italian fans here as I completely botch the chicane. Um, into the second chicane, again, just completely botch it. And uh, the pressure is getting to me. Uh, my debut here in Ferrari in Italy, not going to plan, I'm sure. I'm going to get fired unless I get this right. I threw Ascari, you know what, do a good job there. Massive moment on the exit. But um, the Tifosi there, pleased with my car control skills and, you know, putting on a show for the fans if I can't win the race and at least do some nice oversteer moments to keep it somewhat exciting at least. So as we round out Parabolica on our qualifying lap here, the one shot qualifying. What lap time is going to be? Well, I don't even know or care. It's going to be 8th place, so nowhere near the front. And so here we are on our first ever start for Ferrari. Up behind, he's there again. Mike underscore Oxmall. I won't say his name properly. But um, we, we're going to hurtle here towards turn number one. And, you know, it's Monza. We, we all know what's going to happen here. And it definitely did happen. Lots of cars going... Well, basically not how they're supposed to be going. I actually get a warning for a collision with some car I don't know who they are. I thought I did a good job avoid it, of avoiding everyone there, to be honest. And I find myself here in P7. So yes, I started P8, but I did manage to avoid a good po uh, portion of the carnage. Until this moment, where we get sent careering round, doing a nice little 360 no-scope on the second chicane. And, you know, the... The Tifosi, the fans here, are already leaving with um, their star driver here. Way down the order as I actually get some rear, uh, sorry, front wing damage on my fellow Ferrari driver. Driving into the back of them, completely my own fault. Um, but some more cars spinning, cars facing left, right and centre, quitting the race, getting damaged, you name it. F123, it's not a case of, well, who's actually quite quick at driving a car, it's just... Who can survive and not end up dying? Um, if you can do that, if you can survive, then you're probably going to have a good chance. See so yeah, a couple of cars coming in for the mandatory front wing replacement at the end of the first lap, which is just a staple of F1 online games, really. And then, of course, Mike underscore Oxmal going in for a rather ambitious move, murdering his opponent at the first chicane. That means a position for me. I'll take it quite gladly up into P6 once again through Ascari. Getting to grips now with this Ferrari. And actually catching up with our old-time opponent. This is lap number three now. 
trying to get a much nicer line through this second chicane and you can see here now with a couple of laps behind our, uh, behind our belt really um, really taking this Ferrari and by the scruff of the neck and driving it quite well catching up with this battle for P5 we're going to try and once again gain as we come into Ascari and um, here is going to be a case of slipstream can we get past this guy and it looks like we can the slipstream here is absolutely majestic as we pull out to the right hand side later on the brakes into Parabolica the Tifosi go absolutely ballistic at the sight of that Super GT up into P5 with two laps to go have you ever quite seen a scene like this at Monza I don't think you have as Mike comes back for the overtake on the DRS but I'm having none of it back up the inside we go and we're gonna stamp our authority on P5 and that was just quite brilliantly done and at the end of the race I mean it's not a win but it's gonna be a P5 which is for me basically a win so I'm gonna take it and you know what? I was so happy because I ranked up my podium pass to level 9 which is what it's all about really but um, at the end of all of that we sat on our legendary sofa contemplating whether or not I should continue with the F1 23 online videos. I have fulfilled my contractual obligation to make at least one F1 online video. Let me know if you want to see more. And in the meantime, have yourself an amazing day. Goodbye.